Hey, David here with Electric Motors. Um, in today's video, we're going to take a walk around this beautifully restored 1966 Beetle. It's 100% electric, it's fast, and it's pretty much maintenance free. Uh, first things first, this car is a real blast to drive. The electric motor gives us all the power we want in an instant, and it really drives more like a sports car now than a traditional Beetle. The lithium batteries add some weight to the car, so it sticks to the road, and uh, we add high-performance sway bars and custom shocks, and it helps keep you in line on the curves. This car happily takes any hill we've thrown at it, and on the, out on the highway, it's just unreal. I mean, you can be cruising up uh, at speeds at 60, 70, 80, just step on it, and it just keeps on wanting to go. So that's pretty cool. I mean, all that in a classic car that just makes people smile. I love it. VW put the engine in the back for more traction on the rear wheels. And uh, we keep things the same except for using a three-phase 50 kilowatt AC motor and it bolts right onto the stock rebuilt transaxle. We spent months in the design phase of this electric bug. We worked closely with our engineering partners over at EV West to come up with a bulletproof group of components that fit perfectly in the car's original Porsche design body. Um, EV West engineers switched to electric in their race cars a few years ago simply to go faster. And for us, going electric, it's the same thing. I mean, we're faster, we're cleaner, um, but most importantly, so much more reliable. This brushless AC motor provides uh, up to 120 uh, pound-feet of torque, about 80 horsepower at the wheels, and that's double the car's original, but it's not going to overpower the uh, transmission. The motor is made in Long Beach, California by a company called HP EVS. They've been making industrial use motors since the 60s, and about seven years ago they started a line of motors specifically engineered for electric car conversions. On top of the motor is the 1238 controller from Curtis. It's programmed to our specifications and it can handle up to 650 amps and it's cooled by a small electric coolant system. Above uh, the controller is the Elcon 2500 watt onboard charger and that's designed to work with our battery pack. This allows the car to charge plugged into any standard 110 220 outlet um, and outside, out in the wild, uh, it can be plugged into any of the public chargers. It uses a standard J1772 electric car charge port. It's the same type of charge port used by all production electric cars. And when the deck lid is closed, all the high performance stuff is hidden. The car goes back into stealth beetle mode. Let's go around to the front of the car. Uh, remember, there's no engine up here. Instead, we have uh, one of our two battery packs, but then just right where the gas tank once was. We even use the same bolt holes that held the original uh, tank in place, only now it's much stronger. It's made with uh, 6061 aircraft aluminum. And uh, there's 37 of the 160 amp hour batteries. They are the little green boxes there. There's 12 up here and 25 more behind the back seat. They're from Voltronics. They are lithium iron phosphate cells. They're similar in chemistry to what Tesla's using. These uh, lithium iron cells, they're simply the most durable, reliable, and really the co most cost-effective batteries that are uh, made today. They're estimated to deliver a full charge for at least 160,000 miles. You know, it could give you 12 or 15 years of driving. Um, after that, they can be upgraded. They can even be recycled and they can be reused in other applications. They're mostly made out of copper and aluminum. They're maintenance free and they have no memory issues. They don't require any special charging either. Uh, whether you drive the car, you know, 40, uh, 50, 80 miles, you just plug the car in at night and in the morning you have a full tank and uh, charging can take between one and eight hours. So it uh, just depends how much you drive the car. That's about it for what makes the car go. And uh, if you do have a flat, we include a spare tire. You won't get that in the Tesla. One of the things I love most about driving a classic Beetle is that simple painted dash. 
You know, in the 70s, they added more knobs and switches. Then they covered everything in plastic. I don't know why. The, I love the metal. Uh, everything here is period correct, right down to the radio delete plate. The steel is in perfect shape, and nothing is chipped, dented, nothing's missing. The uh, 66 was the first year to come with stock hazard lights and an on-the-column high beam switch, so you didn't have to feel around for it with your foot. The uh, original speedometer here has been beautifully rebuilt by North Hollywood Speedometer. They refurbished the gearing and replaced the lenses, and all the lights work properly. All the lights in the whole car, every single light works. Um, and yeah, it still smells like a Volkswagen in here. The seats are a uh, classic red basket weave vinyl, and they have these sisal seat pads, and that's really what makes that memorable VW smell. The headliner is spectacular. It's tight. It's super clean. There's no weird seams. It's very straight. There's no signs of glue. It just looks great. We dynamat the entire cabin, and this is really important when you go electric. Every sound seems to present itself. Uh, even the choice in the tire tread can make a difference in an electric car. Under the dash, we add a parcel shelf, and we tuck in a modern iPod-compatible stereo. One of the big things is we've replaced that unreliable mechanical fuel gauge with a digital state of charge meter. And uh, this shows the battery pack charge, and it also shows you how wisely you're using your pack's power. There's no power windows here, there's no AC, no power steering. Um, uh, so unlike today's production electric cars, 100% of our power goes into moving the car down the street. Here's the standard pedal cluster. It looks standard, but the uh, throttle pedal is now a digital drive-by-wire pedal we get from Toyota. So it's just one less thing to squeak in the car. Um, there's still a traditional shifter and a clutch. However, you're not going to need to use them as much. Now, for the most part, you just put the car in third gear and drive it like an automatic. When you come to a stop, uh, there's no need to downshift or declutch. This is really one of the most cool things about the electric motor. When you let off the throttle, the motor slows the car down with its built-in regen braking. Um, and when the car comes to a stop, since the motor's no longer spinning, neither is the clutch or the transmission. So now you can just start up, start off in third gear, step on the throttle and simply take off. Uh, if you want to have a little more fun though, start off in second and then you'll experience the full power of the electric motor. There's really instant acceleration at any speed. Um, you know, a lot of people have asked us, don't you miss that Beetle sound? Uh, no, I mean, I did for about 10 seconds. Uh, you know, that bubbling sound is uh, cute, but it really in no way connects you with the motor's power. Well, it, that didn't have much. Um, the Zelectric doesn't sound like any other EV. Um, and that's because we keep the, the manual transmission. What you do here now is a, a subtle futuristic sound that kind of changes pitch as you drive and it's constantly giving you instant feedback at really every speed. Uh, on the highways, you can really pass anyone with ease, 70, 80, it's no problem. The battery pack that we have in this car is a 20 kilowatt hour pack. It's a little smaller than our prototypes 22 kilowatt hour pack, but uh, we've been getting a solid 80 mile highway driving range, and that's really where you use the most uh, energy. So driving between 65 or 55 and 65 on our hilly San Diego freeways, um, that's about the mileage you can get, and uh, you'll actually go further at uh, lower speeds out on surface roads. You know, with an electric car, you do have to be a little bit more mindful on your trips. But for the most part, you're going to be traveling on familiar roads around your home within 40 or 50 miles. So it's pretty easy to gauge how far you'll be traveling. Uh, since we started driving the uh, our prototype uh, last year, I put about 13,000 electric miles on it. And I've hardly ever um, had to go out and use public chargers. Uh, and at home, it just cost about $3 to fuel the car. Uh, 400 miles. And um, think about it, you're never going to have to replace 
filters or belts or mufflers. You're not going to have to adjust valves or carburetors or add oils or any of those additives. And um, you're not going to have to wait for that smelly old gas pump. Man, this black paint is so reflective. The uh, previous owner referred to it as gleaming, and yeah, it does. It's uh, been correctly color sanded. Just really well done. There are a couple of tiny paint chips up on front from driving, up on the front fenders. Uh, it was painted a couple of years ago. Um, but all the rubbers and are all correct. Everything's in order. All the gaps look fantastic. Uh, the bumpers are heavy triple plated chrome. They're super straight. Uh, this car even has the uh, 66 correct when you're only 1300 badge. And just check out these uh, CA black plates. Uh, they're spectacular. Up front there's a Porsche styled beveled headlamp lenses. Those are covering super bright LED headlamps from Trucklight. These really make driving at night a pleasure and they hardly use any power. Uh, we install, uh, after we install the electric components, we drive it for a couple of weeks every day, about four or 500 miles, just to make sure everything works and uh, all the concerns get corrected. I really love to use the LED bulbs throughout this entire car. They're just super visible, super bright. Keep you visible is very important um, on this car. And uh, for added visibility, we include uh, as electric exclusive hidden third brake lamp and uh, these super stealthy backup lights hidden inside the pea shooter exhaust. I just love that. Uh, the car sits at its stock ride height. And it comes with freshly powder-coated two-tone smoothie rims and uh, white wall radials. And yes, white walls were a dealer option uh, for the Beetle back in the 60s. So there you have it, a reimagined classic ready to head into its next 50 years. Um, earlier this year, this Beetle was awarded a best-in-class award at the La Jolla Motor Concours at the gosh darn it, what's it called? Uh, the La Jolla Concours Motor Car Classic. And it uh, received the Chairman's Award at the Steve McQueen Car Show in Los Angeles. And both of these awards were given to the car after the conversion. Um, a few months ago, the Electric Bug was named Best of the Best 2014 by the uh, Rob Report magazine. I mean, we're just extremely proud of uh, these awards. Um, and especially Rob Report. I mean, they came out, they drove the car, they loved it. And I love driving's electric. I've never owned a classic car that I've driven as much as our prototype. It's just been so reliable. And, you know, this car makes you smile, and then you see others smiling at you. It's uh, really such a good vibe car. This car is barely owned. It is a clean California title. The uh, 1960s Beatles are in a real great uh, sweet spot right now of collectability and affordability, and they continue to increase in value every year, like many classic cars. Um, and, but uh, since we don't permanently modify the car by cutting it or welding it, uh, it retains its uh, full value. Um, and even can be converted back to gasoline in the future, but oh my God, why would you want to do that? Anyway, it's, uh, it's an option. I've included a complete list of all the specs and the features in the description area down below, so be sure to check that out. And, you know, don't hesitate to call me or email me with any questions at all. Thanks for watching, and happy motoring!